Hello everyone, today we will be learning about ionization energy. So the reactivity and ionization have something in common and let's just take a look at it. The reactivity or the ionization is the tendency of an atom to lose its electron, defining its reactivity. So an ionization is a losing of the electron. Very reactive metals lose electrons readily while unreactive metals do not lose their electrons readily. So that's the difference. Just looking at what ionization energy is quickly, we have ionization energy being the measure of the energy needed to remove an electron from the electrostatic attraction force of the positively charged nucleus. So because electrons are negatively charged and we know the nucleus of an atom is positively charged, because it only has protons and neutrons in it. So there's an electrostatic attraction. Now to break that electrostatic attraction, we would use requ require energy. And this energy is called ionization energy. So to remove an electron from an atom in the gaseous state, a strong electric field is required because it's actually quite hard to remove an electron when an atom is in its gaseous state. So you would require some uh, very high energy and that's given from an electric field. And that's how you would draw your electric field. You would have two plates, one being positive, one being a negative. And the um, field lines going from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. The first electron is loosely bonded, hence can be removed with ease. Because the first electron is quite far away from the nucleus and also there are more prioritized electrons, the first is quite loosely bonded and because of this, it's removed with ease. However, electrons in the inner shells require a high amount of energy as they are strongly bonded to the nucleus, mainly because they're much more closer and also they're, they're strongly bonded. The first ionization energy. This is the energy that is required to remove the first electron from the gaseous atom. So here we have a metal reacting to form the metal ion and an electron. And this is the giving off of the first electron. Now let's just look at the first ionization energies of some, elect some metals. We have potassium here having 425 sodium which has 502, calcium or the ionization energies are increasing as you can see. Even more further here we have magnesium with 744, aluminium is decreasing now. It has started decreasing to 584, zinc which has 913, we have iron with 766 again decreasing from here. We have zinc with 715, which is a decrease from our iron, so tin is less. Lead 722. Copper we have 752, so it's a bit higher than our lead here. And we have silver, which has 737, so 737, which is lower than our copper. And gold with 896, so it's quite high. There is no simple relationship. So all these are decreasing and increasing, but there's no relationship between the ionization and the reactivity series. So as you can see, it depends, it's quite random and it doesn't have any relationship with the activity series. Now just looking at group one and two elements, the reactivity of metals increase down a group as the ionization energy decreases. So this is something you should know. With this only apply, applies to group one and two elements. So as you um, move down, the reactivity increases. And what happens is that the ionization energy decreases because a more reactive metal tends to give away its electrons. In other words, it doesn't require the high energy input. That's why its ionization energy is quite low. So here we have, starting off with barium, we have strontium, calcium, magnesium, and beryllium. As you can see, beryllium has quite a high um, ionization energy compared to barium over there. 
transition metals. Now, transition metals are a different case. The least reactive metal is at the bottom of the group. As you can see, um, around gold, silver, that's where the least reactive is. And there is not always a simple trend in the ionization energies. So transition metals have varying trends. And there is no simple trend that we can link our ionization to the reactivity. Now general trends, you should go through this very carefully. We have group 8 elements have the highest first ionization energy within the same period. Because they're noble gases and they have a full outer shell, they don't really want to react at all because they're quite happy as they are. That's why the first ionization energy is quite high compared to the rest of the period. We have group 1 elements having a lower, the lowest first ionization energy within the same period because it only has one electron in its outer shell. It's quite loosely bonded, so it just gives it away. So that's why the ionization energy is quite low. Down a group of the periodic table, the first ionization energy decreases because if you remember down a group, the reactivity increases. And across a period of the periodic table, the first ionization e energy increases with the same expectations, exceptions. So um, with some exceptions, because of the transition metals, you can't really stick to the across a period um, uh, law here, but the first ionization increases because it becomes less reactive as you move across a period. Now just take a look, this is a graph, and here we have the first 20 elements. As you can see, we have some peaks here, and these are all our noble gases. Here we have helium, neon, and argon, and then it decreases down to lithium. Now note after all those peaks, it goes, it dips down really low. That's because all these elements here are our group one elements, and they have a very low ionization energy, as you can see. But then they do rise up without any defined pattern. It just rise up, some decreasing, some rising up at random points, as you can see. So this part here, there's no general trend, but as you can see, we have our noble gases having a very high ionization energy, group 1 elements having a very low ionization energy. Now some trends in ionization energy of the first three pe periods. We have our first group here, alkali metals. Examples of them are lithium, sodium and potassium. And they only have one valence electron. Because of that, they have a very low ionization energy. Then comes our halogens, which are group 7 elements. So may, that includes fluorine and chlorine. They have 7 valence electrons, giving them a quite high ionization energy. Lastly are our group 8 elements, which are our noble gases. Now there are helium, neon and argon, and they have 0 valence electrons. In other words, they're quite happy. They don't want to give away electrons or take in any electrons. Because of this reason, they have the highest ionization energy. The second ionization is the um, amount of energy needed for the second electron to be donated. And it is always greater than the first because the electron moves from a positive ion. Now, if you think about it, if an atom loses an electron, it becomes a positive ion, right? So that means it's positively charged. In other words, this positive charge is stronger than the negative charge. So to remove an electron from a positive charge, you require a greater amount of energy. Successive ionization is any ionization after your first ionization. So each ionization, if a noticeable difference in ionization energy is apparent, the ionization has moved into a different shell. So for example, if it moves between shells, say magnesium, after losing two electrons, it's going to move to its second shell because it has already lost all its electrons from the last shell. So when it's moving into the second shell, it's going to be greater ionization energy because it's coming closer to the nucleus, meaning that the force or the attraction force is greater. That means you have to have a greater amount of energy being put in to take that electron out. 
this this property can be used to work out which group of the periodic table an element is in from it's from in its successive energy so in other words if you just work out if you look at the uh, successive energies you can realize that big gaps show that there's a jump in shells in other words you can work out your group by looking at the ionization energies of different metals now let's just review back to what we learned. We learned about ionization and its uh, form. So for example, first ionization, second ionization, also looked at successive ionization. We learned that we worked out a uh, relationship between the ionization and the ser uh, reactivity series and just compiled a few trends. Now looking at some questions, we have question 11, which is a multiple choice question. Which of the following would have the least first ionization energy? We have four options here, four different elements. We have barium, beryllium, magnesium, and calcium. Just moving down the group, we have beryllium. It is the least reactive out of the group because all these are from group one, group two, and beryllium is at the top. So if, if you have an element from the top of a group, that's the least reactive. Then we have magnesium, which is a third reactive out of the list. So that's clearly not the answer because it's the most reactive that has at least first ionization. Calcium is not reactive as barium because barium is towards the bottom of the group. So A, which is barium, and it is the most reactive, which means that it's a least first ionization energy. So A is our correct answer. Moving to question 12, it says, from magnesium, aluminium, silicon, and chlorine, which would have the highest first ionization energy? Now, to work this out, you would have to refer to your periodic table. Highest first, that means it has a greater, means least reactive. So, chlorine here has the highest because it's towards the right side of your periodic table. It's, a, it's in group 7. So it's our chlorine. Question 13. Decide which group an atom is in if it has the successive ionization energies of the below. We have 1060, 1900, 2920, 4960, 6280, and also 21200. And they're all kilojoules per mole. Now you have to work out which one has the highest jump. If you look at here, we have almost a 2000 gap here, which means that it is group five. In other words, there are five valence electrons. So that's how you would answer question 13. Question 14, it says to define the term second ionization energy. With this, the key verb here is define. In other words, you'd have to provide the definition of it. This is the answer. The energy needed to remove a second electron from a metal, that is from an ion with a unit positive charged. So here we have the mat a metal ion and losing a further electron to give us the metal ion as you can see and it's gaining a charge. So that's how you would go about answering question 14. Question 15 here. Potassium has a lower first ionization energy than sodium. Identify which metal is a more reactive element and explain why. So there are two key verbs here. One is to identify and one is to explain. So in other words you would first identify it and write because and you would explain your answer. So Potassium is more reactive than sodium. Now you have to provide your explanation. Because it is easier for potassium to react by ion losing an electron. So this is your explanation. Now potassium is lower down the table than sodium. So it is easier for potassium to lose the sodium, uh, the electron compared to sodium. So that just brings out, out us to the end of the lesson. We mainly focus, uh, focused on uses and reactivity of metals. So in this um, 
lesson we learned about ionization, how ionization and the reactivity are interlinked.